Hey there, it's Vinnie Moore, sitting here in my home studio. I've just finished a track for Guitar Techniques magazine uh, that was uh, written by Jason Sidwell, who did an amazing job putting this thing together. Some very nice uh, chord changes that were cool to play over, as well as a cool rhythm that I can swing over, which is something I really like to do. So uh, yeah, when I have start working on a song, or you know, jamming, what I often do is I start out just playing along with it and hope for the best. And uh, this one is basically in the key of D. Um, in the beginning, it starts out Mixolydian. So I was just playing like D, Mixolydian, and uh, the sections end with like an F add nine to G. Sometimes F add 9 to A minor 11th. So in those cases, obviously you can't play Mixolydian because the F is there. And if I was playing Mixolydian, I would have to play F sharp. So, you know, you just kind of alter the scale over those chords. And, you know, basically just feel it is what I do. And um, one thing that's really cool about these uh, verse sections in the intro is that it allows you to kind of hover back and forth between um, D Mixolydian and D Blues. In this case, I, uh, D Dorian. So yeah, so, you know, play Mixolydian type of stuff. And then I'm throwing in just uh, D Pentatonic or D Dorian. I'm just like alternating back and forth between D Mixolydian and D Dorian, which is something I like often do. I kind of love dual tonality, so to speak. So yeah, how it starts for me usually is I just hit play and I start recording and uh, hopefully something good comes out. And, you know, I just like if something does, I take note of it and, you know, might end up using that in the final version. And, you know, there's like a lot of throwaway stuff, too, and that's all part of the process. So, um, here, I'll just play along a little bit, and this is kind of how it starts for me. There was a couple wrong notes in there. So I'm not going to fix it, though. I played an F sharp when I should have played an F, man. But, yeah, that's all part of the process. And so then I would like listening back and, hey, was there anything cool in there? If not, I would try it again. And um, if there was, I you know, might add it to the final version. So that's pretty much how things start for me. It's more of a feel thing. And I kind of just go for it and, you know, hope for the best. Um, yeah, and you could hear that I was switching back and forth between the Mixolydian and the D Dorian scale. And, uh, it's funny, like, often I'll come up with, like, a couple different ideas for the main theme, and then I can't figure out, like, oh, man, which one is stronger? Which one do I want to go with? And, you know, that kind of torments me at times. For example, the original melody for this I was going to go with, um, if I can remember it, is this. So yeah, you know, that's a kind of a constant problem I have where I can't just, you know, side on two or three things like often i'll have three different choruses or three different verses and i gotta go like stop Finn, just go with something so yeah i thought that one had a bit of a jeff beck feel from the there and back record and so i kind of thought maybe i shouldn't kind of touch on that so i went with the other type of stuff but basically mixolydian and uh, d pentatonic d dorian then 
there's a key change for the chorus, which is basically to, to my ears a B flat to a C. I think Jason's put the third in the bass for both of those chords. Which would be the E for the B flat. And then F sharp for the C. But basically, you know, what I hear is just major chords. But then he'll alternate and throw a C6 in there, which was really clever. I, I love like color tones like that. When I'm playing, creating melodies or soloing, I usually prefer to have color tones in the chords. You know, it's kind of boring for me to just play over power chords sometimes. And, you know, I feed off of those, those color tones, which is often, you know, the reason I like keyboards to be on a track too. But, you know, if there's not keyboards, I'll try to introduce those color tones in my guitar chords with a clean sound. You know, I just like, I feel that and, you know, kind of inspires me. So yeah, usually like color tones. So here, basically, you know, just like a simple B flat to C. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of play a melody over that and I improv I uh, hit play hit record and I was improvising and I just kind of stumbled across <laughs> thought that was kind of catchy and and so I kept that also I switched to the neck pickup for that part just to fatten it up usually the verse stuff I'm playing the uh, bridge pickup which I have a bad switch I have to fix this and I was afraid this was gonna happen during my performance but luckily it didn't but just jiggle it a little bit time for a new switch fellas so yeah, I switched to the neck pickup. Just try to create a little melody that you can remember, especially in the chorus, you know, that's, and something you come back to in the next chorus, a, a kind of a theme, which is what I like to do. Um, the second time through, I did a cool Larry Carlton kind of thir ascending thirds run, which, uh, I really like a lot. And I got that kind of thing from Larry Carlton from the Room 335 record. He always kind of did that. And uh, yeah, I threw it in here. Kind of a cool um, melodic pattern. Also, you can do it backwards, which is uh, more Steve Gaines-ish. I was a big Skinnerd fan, a big Steve Gaines fan, and one of his licks was like, especially in the song That Smell, where he would, you know, do thirds going down. <laughs> That's another story for another day, but yeah, just simple thirds runs ascending or descending. But in this case, I, I ascend it. And uh, yeah, the chorus is pretty simple with the B flat to C, but then there are some really cool, uh, cool turnaround that Jason wrote that uh, I had to think a little bit more over these. Like, these are big boy chords, man. Um, let's see. So he goes from B flat to C. And this chord. Love that chord there. <clears throat> and uh, basically, you got this guy. It's kind of an E flat over an F. Slash chord. And then you go to B flat major seventh, A minor seventh. And then this uh, D9 sus. I like that voicing there. 
all open strings except for the low E. And mute, mute that one. And uh, I heard some different keys in this. I mean, basically for the whole thing. I was hearing the key of F, actually. Probably more of a Lydian kind of thing. But for the first chord, there's a D sharp in there, so I was kind of hearing more of uh, B flat. So for that one key, I caught the D sharp for that one chord. But as, as soon as it went to this guy, the B flat major seven, I switched tonalities. Um, and then once it goes to this chord, it kind of switches keys again. And I was hearing A mixolydian. So I played that over top. Uh, of that chord. So it was kind of fun to navigate through these chord changes and, you know, what did I do? So the parts I played were... Over that chord I played... Just kind of a um, two-note grouping things per string. And then I moved it up a whole step, which would have caught this chord. So... That kind of thing. And second time around, I think I played, uh, what did I play? So I, you know, I have this for, for this chord. And then this. Played that over top. I think the second time through, I kind of... Something like that, you know, just basically mixolydian, a mixolydian. So yeah, it was kind of cool and fun to play through those. And uh, that brings me to the solo, where I had to do an edit, because at that point, I clicked on the phase 90 switched pickups and uh had to grab the bar and um i play before one the way the solo comes in so i just couldn't do all those things at once so i had to cheat and hit pause and then start the tape again but hey whatever and you know i started the solo with a written line which is something i often do to just kind of start down a certain path you know, so I came up with this. Oh, I would switch on the phase 90. It's all the way um, speed to zero, which is kind of a Van Halen Eddie thing, of course. So I start. Which is, of course, very Holdsworth style stuff and you know starting with the um, bar depressed before playing a note so on that d there i slid from a c and i kind of started with the uh, bar pressed down so you hear it kind of drift up to a d and i think i kind of played something like and then I just went into a lick. Let's see if I can remember it. Um, what was it? Something like that. And I'll get close. So I'm thinking key of D, Dorian, and I start here. That note, which is out of key, but of course we all use that a lot. So, uh, and 
And I'm trying to accent like the start of uh, every one of those groupings with like a pick, almost a harmonic or just a harsh attack. Oh, there goes the switch again. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that, and then from there I was just totally improvising, and, you know, that's, you know, some cool stuff came out. I think, anyway. Hopefully you do, too. And then from that section, we go to the re-intro, as I call it, which I uh, actually forgot to talk about at the beginning. But I basically did volume swells for that. I think this switch is totally gone now. No, it's back. It's back to life. And honestly, I didn't write these uh, parts. I just kind of... I was improvising. Yeah, so just some nice volume swells. And then I added more delay later in Cubase. Um, the, all the delay is coming from Cubase, and one of my favorite plugins is um, Sound Toys Echo Boy Jr., and I almost always go to that first for my delay. Uh, very cool, and that's what's providing the delays on this song. Now, as far as gear, I'm just playing my Kramer Pacer that's been modded, and I'm going into the Phase 90, and I've been using the King of tone pedal a lot for overdrive but in this case i'm using the bad monkey uh, pedal into my marshall jmp 100 watt and there's a cabinet in another room and that's an angle 4x12 with uh, uh, celestian v30s and for this one i went with my sennheiser 409 microphone which i don't believe they make anymore but you can usually find those online somewhere. It's a really cool mic. It's kind of in the family of a SM57, I guess you could say, but uh, maybe slight, slightly warmer, and that works better in certain cases. You know, I use both mics quite a lot. We're not here to talk about microphones, but I know everybody likes gear, so. Yeah, so in the volume swells, in the intro and the outro, I'm just like, again, playing the Mixolydian stuff using the old volume control oops it's weird you know when you're doing this stuff, stuff sometimes and you're improvising you, you kind of start to gravitate towards something you like you know and you'll do it you'll repeat it you know subconsciously and uh, this happens on stage a lot. I notice, like, you know, I might get into a groove where I'm playing certain licks in a solo, and it starts to become, like, I'm not improvising anymore. It becomes a habit because, you know, I improvised it originally, but then I, I like it, so it kind of sticks up here in the head, and you repeat it. <clears throat> Oftentimes, I try to break out of that mold because, you know, I want to be totally in the moment and improvising, so... Yeah, sometimes you could get stuck like that, but, you know, sometimes it's great to have licks that you improvise that kind of stick in your head, you know, on those nights where you, you, you need to draw upon that, where maybe it's not flowing as much and you just kind of go into the, the automatic thing. <clears throat> now, what else in this song? That pretty much sums it up, man. You know, some very cool changes, a nice groove I could swing over. I think my favorite lick in the whole song is um, after the first chorus, which would be... This guy. Very swinging and just kind of... Yeah, I'll get up in your face for this one. Playing this. Then just kind of a nice melody. And 
there's the thing where I'm going uh, uh, from Mixolydian to Dorian. I'm playing this melody, which is Mixolydian. And then here comes the Dorian. This is something I love doing. I'm kind of schizophrenic. My chair is fall falling apart here as we work. So there you have it, man. That was pretty much it. And uh, just a nice tune from Jason. Um, really happy with it. I'm, I'm so glad it's something that's very cool and I loved. It would have not been cool if I got a track and uh, that I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, so thanks, Jason. Thanks, Guitar Techniques. And uh, running out of words here, but that's pretty much, you know, what I was thinking when I did this. And... Uh, one more thing, in case you're wondering what the Marshall sounds like without the bad monkey, I often set it up for, there's that switch again, more of a crunchy tone. That's the guitar volume all the way up. And, uh, you know, I like to, um, I use my volume control a lot and, you know, turn it down and it cleans up. crunchy tone then I kick over the overdrive with not a lot of gain just kind of a mid amount of gain and uh, just hit the input of the amp a little harder so you get some more singing got to turn the volume up though first <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, hope to see you out there soon, somewhere, sometime, someplace. <laughs>